2013 Toyota Sienna 3.5 liter V6 2GRFE engine, spark plugs, ignition coils, and intake manifold gasket. Check the pin comment for the TOM stamps. Next is cylinder numbering and diagnostic codes. The repair for the front plugs on bank 2 starts at about the 2 minute mark. Important part numbers and tools are shown at about the 420 mark. The repair for the rear plugs on bank 1 starts at about the 1215 mark. In this video, you're going to see how to change all of the spark plugs, the three up front and the three in the back there. Also, you, this applies if you're doing any work with the igniters and if you are just replacing the intake gasket, the gasket between the surge tank and the intake manifold because that's all shown in this video. If you're watching this video because unfortunately you might be getting ignition coil codes or you might be getting misfire codes, uh, the code numbers correspond to the cylinder unless it's the uh, multiple misfire. This is the rear head here, which is considered, that's the considered the right hand head. This is the front of the engine. So that's the right hand head and that is bank one. The cylinders on that bank are cylinders one, three, five, odd numbered cylinders on that back head. This is bank two. The even numbers are on bank two. So this is cylinder two, four, six. Ignition coils are numbered like this. A, B, C, D, E, F. And that's the same as one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you're just watching this video, to hit one particular coil or one particular plug, you can use that information to narrow down which bank that you need to be on. It's a good idea to disconnect the negative side of the battery here. That's the black side, the negative side. That's a 10 millimeter. The spark plugs are in here. These are the ignition coils or igniters. And you've got one here, here, and here. And then of course on the back bank, you've got them as well. These plugs are real easy to get to. All you gotta do is remove one 10 millimeter fastener, pull this coil up, drop in a 5 eighths or 16 millimeter spark plug socket, turn the spark plug out, replace it, do all those steps in reverse and you're done. The hardest part of this job up here is not breaking these little connectors, which you can see I've broken one there. Um, I'll show you how to replace these little connectors. I'll put up a timestamp, jump to the end of the video to see it. I'm gonna show you how to do one coil and plug from this up front and then we're going to jump straight to the back. The first thing we want to do is disconnect the electrical. Now I want to make a note real quick. If you think that you're likely to break your electrical connections because they're real old or you get started and they just already are getting crazy, you can remove you can remove the ignition coils on the harnesses. What you got to do in that case is unplug this cam sensor and this VVTI solenoid on the harness so that you can pull the whole harness up with the coils. On this coil, you can take the coil out and get to the spark plug by just removing this fastener and pulling up, pulling up on the, on the coil. I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm just removing that. This is a 10 millimeter. So instead of disconnecting the electrical, I'm gonna pull up on the whole thing, all right? And I've had this coil out recently so it was easy to pull up but you can see you can get it out so my suggestion is to just do that with this one for all the spark plugs that you're doing when you pull the coil out make sure you look inside here and see that you can see that spring in there see that spring in there that shiny thing if that spring's not in there then it's going to be in the hole and you need to get it out because if that manages to somehow fall into the cylinder while you're taking the spark plug out, that's not going to be good. Uh, so just make sure that the spring is in the boot there. We'll just take a minute now to review some parts. Do not remove this spark plug yet. You want to leave the spark plug in there until the last moment when you can just grab it, grab your new one, make sure your new one's already completely ready to go in and pop it back in. The reason is because with that spark plug out, there is a hole directly into the cylinder and anything you drop in there will land on top of the piston and that's going to be a big big problem so prevent that by keeping the spark plug in if for some reason you have to remove the spark plug and you got to leave and go to the store or whatever at least put the igniter back in to cover that hole and uh, tape it up or something 
So just real quick, we'll go over the coil. You can see the part number there on that coil. If you are replacing yours, you want to go with good coils. You don't want to go cheapo, eBay or Amazon, you know, ten uh, or six coils for 50 bucks. Those coils are not going to last. You will be back. You will be back in here replacing coils if you buy cheapos. You can see the OE manufacturer for this application on the Toyota is DE, that's Diamond Electric from Japan. There is the Toyota part number 90919A2004. Now that part number has since been superseded by A2007. The other Toyota OE is Denso and this, the design on the Denso boots is different. Now these are not for this application. This is for another engine, but you can see the Denso boots are different if we compare. We compare how those boots look they're different i would go with de or denso and that's it another thing to consider with the cheapos is that this boot here this boot here on the cheapos uh, it might disconnect as you're trying to pull this out and that's not fun at all so when this boot disconnects you just are left with the spring inside there and you got to go into spark plug tube and pull it out and this happened to me and uh, with my buddy he was doing his he was doing his coils in the back there and that happened somebody a previous owner had replaced it with cheapos and he invented this tool all right this is a wire hanger he invented this tool to get back in there and reach in and pull the boot out it was very tedious and it was on the back bank so there's not a lot of room back there it wasn't on a sienna it was on a camry but uh if that happens to you invent this tool and maybe that can help you hopefully that doesn't happen to you but if you get cheapos it might happen to you for the plugs on bank too this this head that's towards the front here you can get in there with just a straight socket and a regular 5 8 16 millimeter uh spark plug socket but i do for this job recommend this teq swivel 5 8 because it's really great especially when you get to the back this is going to be a real lifesaver so i'm just going to go in with that that swivel 5 8 and then looks like that's maybe a three inch extension if you don't have locking extensions it's a good idea to just put a little tape around here and that'll just keep them from falling apart on you i'm going to be replacing all of these plugs with the same ones that were removed and that is a denso FK20HR11, part number 3426. I'm going to do a separate video on comparing, uh, on a real detailed look at the spark plugs because these are counterfeited often. So you have to buy these from a reputable place, either the Toyota dealer, in which case they'll come in a Toyota box, or from an authorized dealer like AutoZone, O'Reilly, uh, Advance Auto. You can look on Denso's website who exactly is an authorized dealer. Even if you get them from an authorized dealer though, you want to make sure that you check and carefully review all of the details. Some people put a real light layer of anti-seize on the threads here. I do that on some engines. I'm not going to do it on this one because it's my understanding that Denso has a coating on here that basically serves as anti-seize. So. What I will do is just put a very, very, very light coat here of uh, dielectric only on the porcelain and that will, that'll just help that boot, that igniter boot, not get stuck to that. When I say light coat, I mean light, light coat, just a tiny bit like that. And then I'm going to wipe, I'm going to wipe that off too. I'm just going to put it down here where that boot would ride. Don't put any here, don't put any on the electro, just, just kind of where the words are on there. I'm just going to wrap it around and get a little bit on these. And that's it. Just a very, 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 very light layer. That's the plug in there. I like to shoot a little compressed air in there just to clean it out so it doesn't look like there's any oil in there, which is good. So I'll drop this socket in there. I'm just going to turn it until you feel it's on there and it's on there. Turn this out, shouldn't be too tight, and it's not. Pretty much just have to break them free and then you'll be able to turn it by hand. And there's the plug. The 
there's a very strong magnet in the socket, which is nice. You just pull that out. And remember, if you're going to have that hole open for any extended period of time, cover it up, put the igniter back in, or grab the new plug and go back in with the new plug. So this plug is ready to go back in. I'll go ahead and just stick it in the spark plug socket like that. The magnet is nice. Some spark plug sockets have like a rubber boot. And then we're going to put this back in and... The main thing with this is just to make sure you're not cross-threading it because it's going into uh, an aluminum head. So you're going to drop it in. And then once it's seated, give it a couple turns, kind of tug up on it a little, backtrack. And you saw there that you have to, those threads are real long, so you're going to have to spin it for quite a while. Once you, you just, so you're just spinning it in just at first and then backtracking it and then spinning it all the way down. Should be just easy to spin by hand all the way down. Torque on all the spark plugs is 156 inch pounds, 13 foot pounds, which is not much, so don't don't get crazy. There it is. After you get that new plug in there, just drop this igniter right back in place. And then we go back in with that 10 millimeter fastener. Torque on this fastener is 84 inch pounds, 7 foot pounds, very low torque. I'll show you on this one here how to undo this electrical. And in theory, you press your thumb here and then you pull it back. But in reality, this tab often breaks. So if you do have to do undo the electrical, say for example, you're replacing your igniter, you want to get a pick in under here and lift that up. Lift that up and use that kind of as a guide and then very carefully wiggle it out. Yeah, it's just coming there. There it is. You really want to use a pick because it's so easy to break those. Then I just removed that 10 millimeter bolt as we did on the other one. And if your coils haven't been removed in a little while or ever, they might be a little difficult to pull up. So that's how that one it takes a little more effort than you saw in that first one. And there's the coil. So you can see the front Spark plugs are very easy to get. You can have those all in and out probably in 15, 20 minutes, taking your time. But if we look back here on this bank one, this other head here, those are much more difficult to access. Uh, and we have three more back here. So this is where it's gonna get a little time consuming. I put the plastic engine cover back on and that's because now to get the best access back there, I'm going to remove the windshield wipers, that plastic cowl, and the metal cowl beneath it. And that's going to give a lot more room back there. This is not absolutely necessary. There's other YouTube videos uh, that show how to get back there. I'll post a link uh, to one of them where he shows exactly how he got back there. In that case, there's a couple brackets underneath that he disconnected that we won't. And um, over here, there's a. I think he took out the part of the air box over here. We're going to disconnect the throttle body. We'll take this hose out take the cover off, take the surge tank off, take a couple brackets for the surge tank off, and that'll give us our access back there with this cowl off. You'll see every bolt for that job starting now. It's really not that bad to take off the wipers and all. It maybe only takes 15 minutes or so, so I think it's worth it to get the extra room, but that's up to you. I'm gonna take a piece of tape and just put it on the top of where the blade meets the glass, and that'll be a good guide when we put this on later. So I'm just gonna reach in and put this right where the wiper blade is on the glass, like that. So there's what I mean there. All right, we'll start over here on the driver's side, underneath this cap, which you can just pull up like I did. That is a 14 millimeter. So we'll go in here and remove that. Not very tight. With that nut off, we can pull the wind windshield wiper arm up and it helps if you fold it and then pop it off. Here's this passenger side arm. This one's a little tighter, it's still not too bad. This passenger side one, you can't bend the arm up with the hood up, so I just hold the hood and then it'll pop right off. With the wiper arms off, we can remove this plastic piece to be able to get to the metal one. And if you look on the bottom of the plastic piece, there are some clips like this one here. That one's not even in place, so that one didn't get put in place, or that one. But we're just going to go along, or that one, I guess, from the windshield install. We're just going to go along all on the edge to get those popped out. 
Alright, so there's one there, there's one down here in the corner. Neither of those are in place. Then down here there's one. And to get those, you just gotta push them in. Let me show you. There it is. Okay, so just turn it till it looks there. So it looks like we've got a total of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna let those out. Get a little shove. We should be able to pull that out. As you can see, we can leave these in on each side. Those are the piece that kind of goes up towards the windshield. Now we just have to remove this wiper motor assembly. We've got one, two, and then on this side, on the other end, uh, three 10 millimeter fasteners. So I'll go ahead and break those free, and then we'll just have an electrical connection. We'll be able to pull that out. Here's those three fasteners, they're all the same. Right here we have the electrical connection for the wiper motor. I'm just gonna press down on this part right there. And it's gonna be a little hard to press. And then just kind of wiggle it till it comes out. If you use pliers, just make sure you don't crush it. Then over here, I'm not sure what this is right here. It goes to the glass, I don't know if that's a rain sensor or it almost seems like it's heated windshield wipers, but I didn't think we had that on this van. We can disconnect this right here, which we'll have to do. Mine looks like it's been uh, modified by probably a windshield installer at some point. But you do just want to press in on this one, kind of similar to the other one, and pull it out like that. With those three fasteners out and the electrical disconnected, we ought to be able to just grab this motor assembly and pull it out. There's like a little um, alignment point right here that I'm just going to pop it out of, right there. It's kind of stuck in the rubber. I'll show you what I mean in a second. There it is. It's out. Grab that. This part right here is just in a little grommet uh, that I'll show you. That feature on the motor bracket is just in this, so you just have to kind of pop it out. It's just held in there with the rubber rope grommet. I want to be able to remove this cowl all the way, so I'm going to pop that harness out of its little guides. There's just a few of them. They're just the plastic deals like we did before. One there, two, three, four, five. The clip on the end here you can't get to the back of, but it's the same kind of style, so it's in that hole. You can just get in with a pick and push in each side, and then you'll be able to pop it out. With those little clips on, grab this harness and move it to the side. Now for this bottom metal cowl. Now we just have a few bolts. We have five bolts and four nuts to remove this metal cowl. That's what's going to give us room. That's the bolt we removed when we took the motor out. Then we have... 14 millimeter nut here and there, and then 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, then over on this side, we have two more 14s nuts and then 10 millimeter bolt. There are those nuts and bolts for the cowl, and they're the same. We've got those nuts and bolts removed on this. The only thing that we need to do on this now is over here on the passenger side, this is a resistor for the fuel pump, and there's an electrical connection on the bottom. I'm just gonna unplug that electrical connection, 
and pull it out. If you're having trouble with that, if you're having trouble with undoing the electrical, the other option is this nut right here. You can just take this nut off this stud and then the brat, this unit will come down and you just leave it in the vehicle. This is just a mounting location for it. That's all that is. So with those two nuts on either end and the five bolts with that resistor either off of the cowl or the electrical and plug for it, I just tape that up there so it's not in my way. I should be able to just pull this out. I might have to get a little wiggle. Get those. Okay. So up on both sides. Can get it out of here. You can see we have a little bit more room to work now. We're going to be removing this. This is the air surge tank, or you might call it the the intake manifold. Technically, the intake manifold is what this mounts to, but we're going to be taking this off. And so I'm going to take some time to get this cleaned up. This cover, of course, just lifts up, and you want to lift it up one corner at a time. Now to take this tank off, looks like we've got four hoses to disconnect. This one here, which looks like a PCV hose. This little vacuum hose here. This looks like a vapor line hose from a VSV. And then on the back there, we've got that vacuum hose to the brake booster. This seems like it's going to be in my way when I lift that manifold out. So I'm just going to zip tie this so it goes up a little bit higher. That looks a little better. I'm going to mark all these hoses with some blue tape just because there's a lot of stuff going on in this engine bay and it might be kind of easy to lose them. So I'll start with this little one here. This one's going to need a little encouragement. These kind of get crooked on. Okay, there it goes. Okay, that's that one. I'll put a piece of tape on that. Now we'll move up here and this has a clasp on it. There's that one there. When we go to install this, we want to make sure we put this clip back towards the top. This uh, this one should pull out pretty easy because it's probably got a little oil in it. Feels like it does. It's a PCB hose, so that's good. Now over here on the throttle body, we're gonna take we're gonna take the black thing out. We're gonna leave this throttle body in place. So we'll remove those fasteners. So this hose is going into the surge tank, so we need to disconnect that. That looks like that's going to be a little brittle. And you might notice there's a white line on the top, and that, that's a, an alignment mark we'll have to keep in, keep in mind later. Might need to give this a little encouragement. Let's see. I'm just going to kind of twist it a little. There it goes. Okay. So we're twisting it. There we go. Okay. And you can see there that this this hose, let me zoom out some. This hose is on a little clamp here with that other, which is kind of convenient. Still gonna put a piece of tape on it though. Make it easier to see. All right, now we'll get that one in the back. The fourth hose is that one there. And if we follow that back, it goes to the brake booster. And I'm actually gonna disconnect it, I think, at the brake booster there because that is a straight shot and much easier to get up pliers on that clamp. So I'm going to disconnect it there. Let's see if I could grab that there. Reach an in straight. All right, just pulled the clip back. Yeah, that's a bit easier. I'm going to leave. I'll leave that hose on the other side. We'll work on the throttle body now. I'm going to pull this other PCV hose out right here and yeah, that's just gonna rock out like that see how I did that because uh, I want to use this accordion to move back so I'll just pop that out and this here I'm just gonna pop this out of the groove too now this 10 millimeter bolt right here for the air hose I'll undo that and see about getting that air hose back Got this real loose here. Now I'm gonna pull this back. Let's see if I got enough room. Great, looks like I got enough room there. So I can leave that like that. This hose keeps getting in my way, that one that we took out from there. It just connects. 
down here to this USB. So I just moved it out of the way. I'm actually going to undo this hose clamp here on the other side and see if I can't pull that out. So I've got this undone here, or uh, loose anyway here. Let's see what I can do. this to the side just so I got a little more room to work there. There's the throttle body and we have one, two, three, four 10 millimeter bolts that we're going to remove. I think we can keep this electrical in and we don't want to mess with these hoses over here because that is a coolant hose. These are coolant hoses. So just these bolts and then there's a bracket. Let's grab these guys and I'm just going to break each one free and then go to the others. Okay. okay, that's the last bolt and then this will just come off like that. The gasket that we will replace, and we can just put this, just put this to the side, like that. Those are the four bolts for the throttle body. They're all the same. There's the entrance to the air surge tank there with that gasket on there. Which we'll replace later. If we go back here. You can see there is a bracket, and we gotta remove this fastener right there. That's a 12 millimeter. I'm going to try to get in here with the ratchet. It's kind of angled a little bit differently. It's not a dead on hit, so a little tricky getting the socket on there. Let's see if I can get it on there. Uh, all right, there, there it is. All right, so you can kind of see the position of the wrench. It's a little, little off. There's that fastener. Now over on this side, we have another bracket. Right there, you can see that both ends of it, there's a fastener uh, to the valve cover and there's a fastener there to the manifold or surge tank. And I'm going to, we have to remove that bracket all the way, as you can see, because the igniter's right under it. So I'm thinking we might be able to take it out uh, with the, Search tank, so I'm gonna go for that one towards the firewall first. I'm gonna see if I can reach in there with this quarter inch drive flex head with a regular quarter inch drive socket in there. And now let's see. Okay. All right, there we go. I am on it. Let's see. There it is. All right. So as I was able to get in there with that setup, and now I can just spin it out by hand. There's that fastener. Looks like it might be the same. And yeah, it looks like those two are the same. Now we have this electrical over here for the air control valve, right here. So on the top, let's see, is it on the, yeah, on the top here, there's just a little, another little uh, lever to press in and then just wiggle it, wiggle it out. I have to use a pliers on this one because it's kind of on there real tight. If you use a pliers, be really careful because it's very easy to break these with the pliers. All right, so that's undone. 
Now all we have left are six fasteners holding the surge tank to the manifold. And those six fasteners are two nuts, a nut here, 10 millimeter, and a nut right there. And then four, one, two, three, four bolts. And those bolts are a five millimeter hex head. You can use a Allen key for those hex heads, but it's advisable that you get something like this because uh, we're gonna torque those down later. This is a nice set, it was only like 12. 12 or 13 bucks. Uh, we're going to torque those down later in a certain sequence, so you want to be able to reach in there with a torque wrench. We're just going to break each one of these free, and I'm going to start in reverse order as we torque them on. So I'll just break these free here, these nuts on the outside, and then come on the inside and get those hex. You want to make sure you're in there too, that you're not going to strip these since they are hex and they're kind of easy to strip. They're not torqued super duper tight though. Just uh, 12 and 13 foot pounds. All right, now I'll take all those out. a magnet to grab those ones in the back and those are those fasteners the two nuts and four hex head bolts that ought to be it there shouldn't be anything holding the manifold in now so we can go ahead and pop it up okay. let's see there we go and let's see if I'm gonna be able to get it out with yeah oh come on Just barely clearing something back there. Let me see what I'm caught on. Not caught on anything, but over here, that hose there. Right, I'm gonna move that out of the way so this hose can come out like that. And now let's see, give it another shot. go and the sienna don't be surprised if you see some oil around here when you pull that intake up because the sienna does pull in or this engine 2 grfe apparently does pull in quite a bit of oil uh, from what i've read online it just is kind of something that it does now we'll look inside here see if we can see the valves well, i won't be able to see them on that there we go there's just a couple valves there and a couple valves there we can see there they are. You can see it's it's clean down there. It's clean down there where the valves are, but there's uh, some oil residue in the manifold from this thing just uh, sucking in oil. So before we go any further, we want to cover this up so nothing falls down in the engine. Now we can finally get to these igniters and spark plugs. And there's a 10 millimeter bolt there, just like I showed in the front. Just gonna remove that 10 millimeter bolt, do them one at a time. First, disconnect the electrical and be very careful, be very careful disconnecting that electrical. They're easy to break the tab. Disconnect the electrical. Clean it up a little, shoot some compressed air maybe, and then do that 10 millimeter bolt, pull the igniter out and get the plug. It's the best I'm gonna be able to do with the camera. Hopefully this electrical doesn't break. 
This is the first one. These are so easy to break. Okay. There it goes. Oof. Okay, so there it is. That's nerve wracking. Now over here, there's a 10 millimeter. We'll get that out. And I'm gonna do these one at a time. There's that bolt. Oh, now let's see if I can pry this, pull this igniter out. Sometimes you kind of, kind of pry them. Hopefully this one will just pop out. Let's see. There it goes. There's the igniter. All right. Just blowing out the hole there. I'm gonna use the cell phone to look inside. There's the plug in there. Let's grab that plug. Here's my setup to reach it. I'm gonna use this TEQ uh, swivel, 5 8 which is 16 millimeter uh, spark plug socket. It's got the magnet in there. I love this thing, it's great. And then I just got a three inch extension on here with the electrical tape on there so it doesn't come apart. And I can get that in there. And now I'm on the plug, and I can get a ratchet on there, and get this plug out. All right. There it is. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to have to undo the tape to release that, uh, break apart that extension on the top when I got the plug in. We'll see. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I can get out of here with that plug. Looks like I can, and there we go. All right, we got the new plug there. I changed my setup just a little bit here. I went in with a shorter extension, just to make sure I don't scrape that the tip of that plug against the tube when I'm putting it in. Let's go for it, see if I can get this in. There it goes. Okay, that's a good length. So when you get it in, like I mentioned before, just go thread it a couple times and then backtrack just to make sure that you're not cross-threading it. And torque on these is, again, 13 foot-pounds, 156 inch-pounds. Okay, coming in with the torque wrench now. I had to add a little extension to be able to get the torque wrench in there. 156 inch-pounds, so not very tight. There it is. Two more to go. Now we get this igniter back in and we want to put that side obviously facing where the bolt goes and the other side facing where the electrical goes. Get that on there and push it into place like so. Get that bolt. Torque on this bolt is seven foot pounds, very low, 84 inch pounds. There it is. All right, plug this electrical in now. I'm just going to plug it in until it snaps. Snap, give it a tug, make sure it's not going to get loose. And the other two, I'm not going to film unless there's something different I'll mention, but it's pretty much the same operation. All right, so far the only difference on this middle one is I could use that longer extension. Oh, looks like I'm going to have to take the extension off to get the plug out. All right, head back in there with the plug. Last one. If I can get this electrical off, I'll be very happy. Just uh, given how these are, I do highly recommend that you use a pick. And even then, that's no guarantee. This one's harder to reach. It's kind of at a funky angle. Oh, these electrical are a huge pain. There we go. Oh, thank heavens. So I'm just using a ratcheting wrench to get on there since there's not as much clearance. 
Yeah, looks like I might have to take this fastener out here to get clearance for that igniter to move up. That was a 10 millimeter. It's easier, probably, maybe it's easier to undo this and to undo that harness, we'll see. Well, I brought the whole stud out with it, but that's not a big deal. It's just a, a spot here. The other option would be to press in there and slide it off of here, which probably I probably should have done. I don't know. Sometimes it'll break. But at any rate, I do now have enough room. There it goes. Okay. All right. Uh, I got the new plug. I highly recommend this this uh, socket this from TEQ. Or there's other people that make it, but it's really great. It gives you a lot of um, flexibility. And this one is kind of the one that's lowered at an angle for the electrical. Get that in there. There we go. Then get this electrical snap. Snap. Alright. If this happens to you, just take a 10 millimeter wrench. And this is a E5. And get on there and just break that free okay. so you're gonna turn you're gonna turn the stud in the on direction or the nut in the off direction and then just install the stud and then in the nut just gonna use that e5 socket to put this in place here I noticed that this stud was loose so it was just spun right out that's one of the studs for the nuts on that surge tank. I don't have a torque value for it. The only other torque values I have for similar studs are 35 inch pounds, which is very low, but that's what I went ahead and installed it at. That is an E6. You can see some of that oil sheen there on the bottom of the surge tank. We're looking at the bottom side. That orange, those three orange gaskets will replace those. The ones we're going to put on are blue because I got the Thal Pro ones, but if you get them from Toyota, they'll be orange like that. If you have black ones, it'll be an earlier version of the 2GRFE. You want to have orange ones in there or the updated Felpro blue ones because um, there was a little problem with the original black ones. Toyota changed them up a little bit, but you can see inside each one of these paths that there's a little bit of oil. That's apparently pretty normal for this engine. You can pull these gaskets out here and replace them with the new ones. You can see they've got they've got a feature on the side. Yeah, oily. So I'm going to go in these channels and get this cleaned up and also get the dirt out. Don't knock any dirt into there. Here are the replacement gaskets. I'm going to use these Velpro MS96786 and you can see they are blue. I'll also put up the Toyota part number. If you buy the Felt Pros, you get all three. If you buy the Toyota number, you're only going to get one. So make sure you buy three if you're using the Toyota number. And those will be orange. I got that cleaned up and I cleaned up any dirt that was in these areas just so I don't accidentally knock that into the engine when I'm putting this putting this manifold back on, or the surge tank back onto the manifold. Now these new gaskets, you can see they don't fit that way. They only fit one way, so you're not going to get it wrong. We're just going to press each one of these in to place and the throttle body gasket that's over on that end we'll do that later since it's liable to fall out we'll do that before we put the throttle body back on I'll show you the part and the part number at that time let's get these all in here and when these are in they're not going to fall out so you don't have to worry about them about dropping them if they are falling out then you want to get different gaskets because they might not be the right size Make sure you push them in all the way around on each one because you don't want 
you don't want it to fold or anything as you're putting it back on there because remember that surface that this is going on to is flat so you'll end up with a vacuum leak if you don't have a good seal here so just take the time to go around each one there they are now you can see they don't fall out I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this bracket this side this L side to the back of the air surge tank there you can see the other side of that is that bolt hole right there so this has got to go under that harness and if you don't put the bracket on before you go in that harness might be in the way we got the new plugs back in there got the bolts in for each igniter and the electrical connected up for each igniter now you see i've got this uncovered here go ahead and clean that surface up just make sure it's nice and clean and we'll drop this surge tank back on when we put this in this pcv hose we're just going to make sure we're not going to smush that so let's go ahead and get it in and we'll use these studs here for alignment on it i've got the bracket installed here just loosely so it won't maybe hopefully won't get in the way as much it's going to be difficult to get a tool on there but it should at least be able to get just a regular wrench now again mine these alignment tabs and this pcv hose get that out of the way and let's see we're aiming to so we have the bracket go through here let's see what we can do Almost there with the bracket. And over here. Put my cut on. I'll go a little over that way, maybe. Mm. No, the bracket doesn't. Oh, okay, now I got the bracket where it needs to go. Get all these alignment studs. Over here, just make sure you've got this, you know, area where you can get it on. That's where that goes right back there. These are those fasteners, the four with the five millimeter hex head, and then those two 10 millimeter nuts. There is a sequence that we want to use to tighten these later, but for now, we're just going to get them hand tight. And again, make sure this PCV hose here, make sure this hose isn't getting smushed anywhere. I'm just kind of pulling the surge tank towards me a little bit because it's going to want to rock back a tad without the fasteners in place. This intake is aluminum as you can see so if it doesn't feel like you're in in the hole just stop because it should be very easy to put into place. I'm just going to get these guys hand tight and then I'm going to need a magnet to place those ones in the back, those ones back there. I'm going to magnetize my Allen key here. It'll make it a little easier to get in there, less likely to drop it. You can say I'm just doing hand tight. With those fasteners there just hand tight, let's double check our bracket on this side as well to make sure that that's going to align okay. There's where the throttle body would bolt in, you see, and that there is lined up. And back over on this side, there's that bracket. You can see it is lined up with the hole on that valve cover end. And it's not all, all the way in on the surge tank end, but I'll be able to get in there later with the 12 millimeter open end wrench. I'm going to leave that like that right now because we're installing this in reverse order as we disassembled it, which means we want to get these manifold 
the search tank to manifold bolts in first. And there's a special sequence. I'm going to put that up. There's our tightening sequence there. So we're going to start with the hex, the hex head, the five millimeter bolts, one, two, three, four, and then over to the nuts, five, six. Final torque on the fasteners in the middle, the five millimeter hex head ones is 156 inch pounds. Final torque on the two nuts is 144 inch pounds. So I'll just go over, make multiple passes, doing this same pattern over and over until working up closer to that torque and then finish it off with that torque. So again, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just around and around. I'm going to start here with my little tech in and I got it max set at 100 inch pounds right now. And I'll just make a, a bunch of passes on all of these until it clicks at 100 inch pounds, then I'll come back, move it up to 120, and so on. Just keep doing that. The idea is just to do this in this sequence so that you don't mess up the mating surface between that gasket and the uh, manifold. All right, and we're good. Now we'll get back to that bracket over there and put that bolt in and tighten down the top one. Probably not gonna go over the torque wrench back there, but just don't overdo the one, especially going into the plastic. The spec on those is 180 inch pounds. So just gotta reach around there and feel for the bracket and place the fastener. Just put that one in there by hand and then come back and tighten that one up and that one there. I remember I was able to get in there to remove that with this quarter inch drive flex head. So I should be able to likewise. All right, I was actually able to get on that top bolt on the bracket that you can see with that same setup, that quarter inch drive. And there I am on that other one. Gotta love this little flex head. We have one more of these bracket bolts, the 12 millimeter. And this is the one that goes back here, right there. If you want to get a torque wrench back there, the torque on that one is the same as the others, which is 180 inch pounds. Back over here, we can plug this in for the control valve, air intake control valve, ACS, ACIS, however you say it. Make sure that snaps, it's on there, good. If you want to clean your throttle body at this time, that's not a bad idea. Use some carb cleaner on a rag and just go in and wipe around. Don't move the valve. Uh, if anybody knows better in the comments, please leave a comment, but it's my understanding that you're not supposed to move the valve on these electronic throttle bodies while, uh, while it's disconnected because you have to reset some sort of TP sensor. So just don't move it. Uh, just wipe around the edges if you want to do it. And then of course you can do it on the other side. Now I'm going to replace that throttle body gasket. I'm going to use this part here. This is Feld Pro. I'll put up the uh, Toyota part number as well. We'll just pull out the old one, clean the, clean the surface in there, and pop in this new one. There's that. You'll notice on the top of the new one, or when you pull up, there's a tab on the top. And that tab goes right up here. So we can get it in, get that tab lined up and push it into place. Let's go all around it. Now we'll put that throttle body back in place. That's these three, uh, four fasteners. These are the 10 millimeters. So we'll just install each one of these finger tight all the way around and then we'll come back and torque this down. It's a very low torque spec. And um, there is a bracket on the bottom. Let me just put one in here so I can grab the camera and show you. I guess maybe I'll stick in a couple of them real quick. You can see there's a little bracket that's got to fit in there. So make sure you get that on there like that before you put the fastener in. That's just holding up some electrical. And so I'll line up with that little bracket through there. And then I'll just get all these hand tight. Uh, torque on these is super low, 84 inch pounds.
Now we'll do this hose here. And if you remember, this, this opening for that connection goes towards the throttle body. There's an alignment groove here that's going to line up right here. And another one here, a little slot that's going to line up over here. You might not be able to see it, but I'll show you after I get it in. Gotta kind of feel all around it, make sure that it's not, it's not um, folding in on itself. There we go. Pass this side. Where it tends to want to fold is on the throttle body side, on the bottom. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave. That right there is a temporary install. Look over here and get that alignment done. So this has got to turn some. Here's what I mean about these little tabs. You can see on this end. Right there. You just want to have the hose aligned with that plastic tab. And then on the other end, there's like a stopper down there. And then Right here, you want to get that as close to that as you can. Feel all around the edge to make sure that you do not have any folds because uh, you won't, you'll be pulling in unfiltered, unmetered air if you manage to kind of get that folded, which is possible just because it's such a tight space to put this in. Okay. Now, don't forget to tighten up these, these are 10 millimeters. And the one on the other side also 10 millimeter. Now we'll do this hose here, which fairly obviously goes right in there. You gotta really work these in though. This part will catch on that part in there. You gotta get it past that. You can see there's a little groove where it's supposed to fit. So you just gotta really work them. This can be a little tricky. There it goes, okay. With that one there, make sure you have this pushed all the way up. There shouldn't be a gap right there. This clip also, you want it in the top position like that. So those four hoses for the surge tank. This one we'll do in a second. This one here with the white line on it, that goes right back here. Get that on there, push it all the way in. That the white line you can see lines up there. I'll show that in a second, but it lines up with a tab. And then this little guy here goes on there. Just make sure that's on there real well. Good. Then this big PCV hose, we're gonna squeeze this part of the, oops, squeeze the clamp in and slip it on all the way. And then you want the clamp to be in the top position like that. You don't want it to be over here or over there. The foam is cut to accommodate the clamp at the top like that. Here's what I mean there with that one, with that white line. Uh, PCV hose up here and this little vacuum hose here. If you disconnected this hose here that goes into this VSV, it's time to put it back in. That's the hose that goes right there. That's what I mean there. If you disconnected that hose, just push that clamp back down to where you can see it was. There's little marks that you'll see on the hose. This goes in here and then that's running back there. Now we can do our line to the brake booster there. You can see where that clamp wants to go. It's got grooves. So just put it back in those same grooves, see how it works like that. And then just reach it in, line up, and then open up the, open it up with the wire pliers. Oops, get it on there. Okay, oh, release that. And if you decided not to disconnect this side of the hose, but instead to disconnect the other side of it, then obviously make sure you get that one put back in place. That's pretty much it as far as mechanical. The only mechanical we have disconnected yet is the fuel pump resistor. And I'll tell you, uh, I'll make a note on that in a second. And so we can put the cowl in because I decided to take the cowl out with the fuel pump resistor on it. I'm gonna put the cowl in. If you didn't, if your fuel, if your fuel pump resistor is still in the engine bay, you can go ahead and start the engine now and just make sure it sounds good. 
If you tied up your electrical like I did there with that zip tie, it's time to undo that. So just like when we pull it out, we're just going to go and line it back up with those fasteners, those studs there. It might take a little from angling. I just finger tight installed those four nuts on each side of this just so I don't have any crazy rattling. When I start the engine, it might uh, throw me off the trail. And there's that fuel pump resistor I was talking about, so I'll just plug this in and make sure it snaps. You can see there's some grooves on the side, so it only fits one way. I'm gonna get that to snap. Snap. Now we'll reconnect the battery and start her up. She started, but unfortunately I've got a check engine light, and that's the code P0354 ignition coil D, primary secondary circuit, so I'm going to check that out. Alright, so I'm a total knucklehead, and I'll explain why. The code I just got is P0354, it's for ignition coil D. This is confusing to me because ignition coil D is this one right here. It goes A, B, C, D, E, F. So I've only done work on that back other than showing what I did in the beginning of the video, uh, how to disconnect this electrical. And guess who didn't reconnect the electrical after showing how to disconnect it? That would be me. And so I'm going to plug this in, plug that in, snap, reset the clear the check engine light, restart her, and make sure that that was what it was. Ignition coil D, primary secondary circuit. So I'll go ahead and clear that. Let's get the focus, erase codes. Yes. Okay. There are no codes on the other module. Okay. So I just cleared those codes. I'll go ahead and restart and see what happens now. check engine lights off and she sounds great so I'm rescanning here that was where it was let's see no stored codes no pending codes it will be in the permanent code there it is there it'll stay in the permanent code until you go through the drive cycles and let's see check the other side nothing Nothing, and this one has no permanent codes on that side, so, all right. Hopefully this doesn't happen to you, but if it does, now you know what those codes mean. So she's running final check engine light on that back bank where we did the plugs, and so now we can tack down these nuts, nut here, nut there, two back on that side, and then the four 10 millimeters. Here are those five 10 millimeter fasteners. Torque on these is very low, 49 inch pounds, or, you know, that's just just over four foot pounds, so these don't need to be tight at all. But the nuts, the nuts are part of the strut tower assembly and those need to be tight, 66 foot pounds on those nuts. You might need to loosen the, the nuts that we just did hand tight in order to get this to be right in the right position for some of these. A couple of these holes, or one of the holes is slotted, the rest of them are not. Don't forget the last one of these, which goes way over here. And the space on the other side that's like this, that's where we're going to put one of the bolts for the wiper motor, so don't put one of these in there. Now we'll get this harness back into its little spots. You remember right here on the bottom of this one there, that goes in there. Just push it, kind of push them in place as much as they'll go. And then this one over here, down on the bottom there, you just kind of walk along. It's pretty, pretty obvious where they go. That is for this connection here, which apparently is heated windshield wipers. I'm going to take a minute to repair this because this looks like this got butchered up by a window installer. So I'm going to cut this tape off and see what's going on under there. So somebody did something where that came out like that, but 
And I'm going to push it right back into that track there. I'm going to push it right back into that track. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with this thing. Uh, this to me just looks like waterproof, like marine uh, heat shrink. So this may be where they just junctioned in the wires. I don't know if this harness comes with the windshield when there's a replacement windshield or if it just comes with wires sticking out and then they have to reuse this this uh, connector. It would make sense if they just had to reuse this connector and then they're just tying it in there. So that's all I think that is. So I'll put this back around here with some more tape. So then you can just get this pushed together until it snaps. Snap. Give it a tug. And that's good. Now we can put the wiper motor assembly back in. And remember this feature here goes in that grommet down here. I'm just going to put some rubber grease on there to make it easier to go in. So I got that there greased up. Now I'm just going to grab this and move it over and push it in there. Okay. Here are those fasteners. Those are 10 millimeter. Torque on these is very low, 62 inch pounds. There's this one here. Just got to move it around to get it aligned and then the other one remember the other one you've got to pull that that rubber piece back there it is okay that's in there now and the other one goes under there and the other one is over here and now the electrical for the motor that just goes in until it snaps snap all right now for this upper cal the plastic one and on this end you can see there that one square part. That's where we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get that square part lined up with that little clip there, right there. So behind it, there's also kind of a slotted deal that goes to that slot. So looks like we might have to kind of put it in place and then lift these up and snap it down. got it under it on the other side, but not on this side, so let me finagle this. Over here, you can maybe see that slotted one up on the top. So I gotta, I gotta kind of move it up. You can tell it's not centered there. I just gotta kind of position it up a little bit more. It's catching on something. Where it's catching for me here is right there. You can see there's a couple of, of little features that go under the glass, so I gotta pull it back and slip those under the glass. You can see those go all along that length. So let's try this again. All right, I'm gonna go all along it and get it under the glass there. There it goes. Okay, cool. So I pushed it in the whole length on those clips under the glass, and you can see it's kind of. Like if you pull it out, it's just kind of nice to see the dirt line there. That's where it's in. So now we can work on these deals here on each side. It's got to go back in here and then that slot. So let's see if I can get that in place. But there it is. All right, so it snapped in. We'll do the other one. Now we'll do the wiper arms. And if you look at this shaft here, you notice there's some spines on the bottom. There's spines in the inside of the arm, so that's why we put the tape there because we're gonna have to line up, line up with that wiper blade with the tape. So I'll do the driver's side first since you could put that on with the hood up. See that D there? That's for driver. The passenger side has a P on it. And you see the splines in there? So what you wanna do is fold it, so have it in the folded position. And just kind of take an educated guess, if this will focus. Just kind of take an educated guess where you think it might be. You know it's not going to be like this. You know it's not going to be like that. So maybe somewhere around there. And catch those splines. And then just do a temporary install of this nut before you fold it down. Because uh, it'll just pop off if you don't install the nut before you fold it down. And that's a 14. So I'm just going to tack it down. So I just have that nut temporarily installed right now to see how close we'll get and this looks like this is going to be it that looks like that's right where it needs to be you can see here where we're, we are where we need to be so we can go ahead and torque that down torque is 18 foot pounds and 
Maybe this pop on this cap just goes on, snaps right in place, and it gets my glove. All right, we'll do the other one now. You have to have the hood at least partially down for the dry, uh, passenger side wiper. So let's see about the on this one. Oops. Same deal, just kind of make an educated guess. That is too high. Take it off. And we'll go down on one slide. Go up and just barely over. Okay, let's try that. That is it. So we can torque that one down. There it is. All right. And don't forget the little cap. Wipers are on, cowls are on, spark plugs in the back are done. So that wraps it up. Now I'm going to do these front plugs as well, but you can see uh, that's very easy to do compared to the back. Make sure all your coils are plugged in so you don't get a check engine light like me. Now you can see there's tape on this, and again, that's because I broke that fastener last week. And so I'm going to take this tape off and pull this out, and I'll show you how to replace the plastic part on the connection. That there is the part that I broke off, that tab. It's really, really easy to break them. And so Toyota sells just this plastic part here. Uh, I'll put a part number up for that, and that's a, a good option. It's more economical, but admittedly lower quality to go with this you get the wires on here and I guess some people just uh, splice it in but there isn't a reason to do that since we can take this plastic part off and just keep all those same ends and just pop this plastic part so I'll show you how to do that if you buy this from Amazon you'll get it like this like I said with the wires in it uh, we need to take that out. If you buy it from Toyota, you won't get the wires. You'll just get the um, the end product, which is what we're going for here, so to speak. I'm going to use a real small screwdriver. There's two ways you can do this. You can either, let me get it to focus. You can either get in here with a real small screwdriver and press this little black tab down. You can sort of see the little tab there, that little tab. And if, you, if you're lucky, you can do it without removing the white thing, or you can do it with removing the white thing. On the Toyota one on the vehicle, we'll probably have to remove the white thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here, real small screwdriver, and I'm just going to try to press that little black tab. down and see how as I'm pressing it down I'm turning the screwdriver up and that's pushing the wire out if you get it right it'll push the wire out there it goes okay so to show that again going in there that little tab you'll see this a little detail later if you get it right you can push it to push the tab down and then push the screwdriver up at the same time the same here same deal here, get under. And they're easier to remove on the Amazon connectors than they are on the Toyota ones in the vehicle. So go in here, there it is. Now we can just pull these wires out. We don't have to keep track of these wires since we're not gonna be reusing them. And I'll just pull all these out and I'll show you what we were kind of doing in there. The little black tab, which is down Okay, see how those little black tabs are? Those ones we moved down, you can see how they kind of move back up. What those were catching on was that bottom there, that opening. So we're just trying to get in there to clear that and then pull the wires out the back. 
Now the other way you can do this if uh, on your connectors you can't get a little screwdriver in there is to pop the white thing out which is what we're going to have to do on the vehicle anyway because the original toilet ones are built a little better than these. Just, just You can go in there but sometimes it, it's a little too much. You're just scraping, just trying to get a bite to pull this out. It's just held in there with those little tracks there and then with that out you can go in with a screwdriver. Say you only have this size of screwdriver, you can get that in there to get those hooks down. It takes a little bit more finessing, but like if I go in with this little one, push that little thing down and move back, and then push that. See, it's out. So that's the other. That's the other way that you want to want to be able to have as an option. Okay, see that's down. can actually see how that little tab moved down, so I should be able to press this out. Yep. Let's try see if you can see it here. The little tiny tab. Okay, see how it just moved down? And I should be able to press it. Yep. This one here, down, and press it. So that's the other way that you can do it on these uh, connectors. However you end up doing it, you want to, in the end, you want to have this back on here before we install it so you can see it only fits one way. So if you didn't take it off, you don't have to put it on, but if you did take it off, it just pushes right in place. Now this is what we will use to install. So obviously I'm not going to have any trouble pulling this connector off because it's broken. And we're just going to go in there and do the same thing. So let's pull that white thing off first. Pull this white thing out. Pull it up and out. I'm going to go on the top here, just kind of dig in. There it goes. All right, when you get in there, you're looking for that little black thing on the bottom. And when you have it down, it will stay down. That one's not going down. Let's try this one. Okay, that one's down. Oop, it just popped up. Let me try this one. Okay, all right, that one's down. I can push that wire out, all right. And this one, there it is. Push that one out. This first one. I have to come back to this first one. Let's try this last one. Mm. There it goes. Okay. So I got all of them except this first one. Let me try to get in there a little. There it goes. All right. So now I can push these out. See how they're coming out on the back? Grab our new connector. And we're just going to put this new connector in. Same orientation. Like the, the clip is broken on there, but that's how it goes. So we'll just pull these out like that. And now these are going to go back in those holes there, same order. And when we push them in, we'll hear them snap back into those same spots. So let's do it one at a time. Listen for snaps. Oh, let me get them on there a little bit more. Okay. There, well, there's one snap. Oh, well, they kind of all... Yeah, they kind of all snapped in at once, but they are in there, you can see, and up there, you can see they're connected. I'm going to push them to make sure. Yep, that's in there, that's in there, that is in there. Those are all in there. Let me double check that one, seems like I might have to press that one in just a little bit. Nope, that's good. That's in there. And now we can snap it back on and we have a new connector. And that's a wrap on this job. I hope this video is helpful for you. Just for reference, this job typically books at about four hours at $120 an hour plus shop fees and taxes and the parts. 
and you always pay a little extra for parts when you buy them at a shop obviously you're looking at probably between six and seven hundred bucks more if you go to a dealer to have this job done at a shop so if you can do it yourself you can get all the parts the two gaskets that the throttle body gasket the intake gasket and then the six plugs and even a couple of connectors you can get all that stuff for about 75 bucks or maybe even a little less so i hope this video was helpful for you thank you for watching and good luck with your repairs